Ashley Cotton, the host for the Life Talk Show. And today with me, I have the panel, which comes on the last Saturday of the month. And we are here live on the Radio Therapy Network studios. And I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in this afternoon, just sharing this hour with us. I thank you all so very much. Um, if you would like to, please share, like, comment. I go back to read all the comments and also um, interact with you as well. So I want to say thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. Uh, this topic that we're going to discuss today is about the compromise, compromising as Christians. Is it possible to walk the straight and narrow path that God has called us to? So before we get into it, you know that I have Audra here to my left and also KM Johnson Davis to my right. And I have Camille Raymond uh, online. She's not here with us in the studio, but she is by uh, via uh, phone. So you all will hear her chime in as well, too. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you thanksgiving, Lord, in Jesus' name. We come humbly before you, Father God, asking for you to put the words in our mouths, Father God, that you would like for us to speak out. We don't come with any... Um, any um, unwillful intentions whatsoever, Father God, that this is about you and this is for you, Father God, to advance the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So I pray, Father God, that you would decrease us and that the Holy Spirit will arise in each and every one of us, Father God, and we give you all the honor and all of the glory, Father God. Have your way today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So where Amen. I want to start is in Luke chapter 4. And this scripture is, is clearly about the devil tempts Jesus because we're going to go somewhere as far as one man who was made, who was born of the Holy Spirit, but also in the fleshly body, experiencing all the things that we experience as well too, having a human experience. And how is it that one man could defeat the devil and we're called to defeat him as well because we have the same power of the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus as well too because he sent the helper to us and then we're going to read also in Numbers 22 about a prophet Balaam who was on the straight and narrow path with God. He can hear God. He followed God's instructions and God put the word in his mouth to speak but yet the compromise came. So here we go. Luke chapter four, verse one. Now, Jesus, full of and in perfect communication with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they ended, he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God. So look how he tries to question his identity. He will always come after your identity after God has established you and said who you are and what you are, the devil will always come to attack your identity. So he says, uh, if you are the son of God, command this stone to turn into bread. Jesus replied to him, it is written and forever remains written, man shall not live by bread alone. Then he led Jesus up to a high mountain and displayed before him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth and their magnificence in the twinkling of an eye. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this rim and its glory, its power, its renown, because it has been handed over to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus replied to him, it is written and forever remains written. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then he led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle highest point of the temple and said mockingly to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here for it is written and forever remains written. He will command his angels concerning you to guard and protect you and they will lift you up on their hands. This is verse 11 so that you do not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus replied to him, it is said in scripture, you shall not tempt the Lord your God to prove himself to you. When the devil had finished every temptation, so he gave him every temptation, not just one, but every one. He temporarily left him into a more opportune time. Okay, 
So now we see what Jesus did. Jesus was using a word against the devil and the devil was using the word right back at him to try to get him to fold, tempting him with every temptation with the highest place that he was willing to offer and give to him. Okay, so now we go to Numbers chapter 22. And I'm not going to read scripture all day, uh, but I'm just hitting some major points for us to think about and for us to talk about. So here it is. Balak, Balak sends for Balaam. So the Israelites journey and camp in the plains of Moab on the east side of the Jordan River across from Jericho. And Balak, the king of Moab, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. So here's the fear part that comes in from King Moab. He saw what the Lord had done with the Amorites through Israel, right? So now he wants Balaam, who is the prophet, uh, which is God's mouthpiece that says, thus saith the Lord. He wants him to curse Israel. So he's going to offer him all of this, these, um, these uh, earthly things, these possessions that the king of Moab is willing to offer Balaam if he would just lie and curse Israel, right? Which is God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. So here's the story. So if we jump down, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me, I got to find it. But that's pretty much the gist of it. I'm trying to find a, a, a specific, uh, specific uh, scripture that where he's tempting him with all of this stuff. So he's like, you didn't say this, you didn't do that. And... Now, I'm not going to bless you because you're allowing your God to get in the way of me increasing you, of me blessing you with houses and, and sheep and all the stuff that he had because he was king. So now I pose the question, is it possible to walk this straight and narrow path? Um, I can answer that. I, I do believe that it is possible to walk the straight and narrow path. Mm -hmm. I do feel like... Oftentimes, we are all tempted in some way mm -hmm. by something. Um, but we need to surround ourselves by individuals that may be stronger in the faith to a degree so that when we are in a place that we are at our weakest point and we are in a place where we are tempted in dealing with a certain situation, that we have these individuals around us that can pray with us and for us and speak to us to help us to get, you know, back onto the right path. Um, I do feel like it is possible, but it's not to say that it's not going to come with, you know, just like an easy way. Mm -hmm. um, so... Okay, so while you were talking, uh -huh. praise the Lord, because I found the scripture that I was looking for. So this is in Numbers 24, and it starts in 10. So it says, then Balak, Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, but behold, you have done nothing but bless them these three times. So he's went before the Lord three times to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord says, listen, those are my people. You are not to curse them. You're going to put, you're going to say the words that I put in your mouth to say. And so then he says, therefore, now flee to your place. I had intended to honor you greatly, but behold, the Lord has held you back from honor. Balaam said to Balak, did I not tell your messengers whom you had Sent to me, even Balak would give me this house full of silver and gold. I could not go beyond the command of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own accord. What the Lord speaks, that I will speak. But then later on in the story, and maybe you all will find it yourselves in your own study time before the Lord and really seek him on this. But later on in the story, Balaam falls to his flesh and he compromised and he takes the silver and and the gold that King Moab was offering him. And now he, now the Lord's uh, anger is kindled. So not only did he do that, but he turned Israel to the Moab gods and idols and was worshiping with them. And that was a no-no in God's eyes mm -hmm. because they turned away from God, his own people. So that's the gist of it. So, you know, so as we were reading, I started thinking, you know, that's a lot of our lives. Like we try to do the straight and narrow. We try to, we try to do the right thing. Balaam started off with, you know what? No, 
I'm not going to just pray that you get a brand new house in a Bentley. If that's not what the Lord wants for right. you, I'm not going to pray that for mm -hmm. you. And he continued to pray that for you for, you know, pray what God wanted. He went to God and asked the Lord, what do you want me to do for these people? And the Lord said, bless them. But then somewhere along the line, like you said, he finally gave in and was like, well, you know, this money over here is looking pretty good. <laughs> and so, and I really need it. Um, well, you know, the Lord should understand, you know, maybe this is, and, and see compromise comes in re with reasoning, right? Right. And it's like, you know, you start saying, well, maybe this is the way that God is trying to bless me. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I should go ahead and accept it and do it, even though what you're doing does not align with the word of God. You know, and so at the end of the story, he's compromising who he is and whose he is just for something that he wants. But I think that we all, I think that we all have, even, even the strongest of us, you know, right. we have those moments of compromise. And you, when you sit in a situation long enough, you know, and you're around people long enough, you start to forget who you are and, and, and. Actually, over um, the holiday, we were just talking about the familiar spirits, like familiarity. Mm -hmm. When you're around people for so long, they become so familiar with you, you start to pick up some of their habits. They start to pick up some right. of yours, and you really can't see your way out because it all looks the same. But but I think it's interesting that you started, actually, with the, the scripture when Jesus went to fast. You know, and that the fact that he set himself apart and he was strong because he fasted, he was, he didn't, he wasn't in a place where he could be tempted. But a lot of times we are in places where we can be tempted because we're not doing those tenements of our faith in order to, to gird us up. Because sometimes it's not about having just, it's not only about having the right people around us, it's also about what we're doing in our private time when it comes to God. And Camille, what do you think? So, excuse me. So I wanted to go back to your question about do you, do you believe that it's possible to walk the straight and narrow? And I do believe it's possible. Of course, it requires the help of the Holy Spirit. I don't believe it's possible for us to do it alone. Similar to what Cam was saying, you need a support system, but you absolutely need the Holy Spirit in order for that to even happen. And the reason why I think it's possible is because, you know, in the Bible where it says, be ye perfect just as your your father in heaven is perfect why would he commission us to do something that isn't possible and when he's talking about perfection we know it's not like you know not making a mistake on mathematics or some or turning left when you turn right on the road not that kind of perfection but just character perfection so if it wasn't possible i don't believe that god would commission us to do it in his word right. to tell us be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect and also somewhat um piggybacking off can point about the fasting you know I noticed in the scripture when you were reading it just highlighted to me when it said that the enemy left <laughs> but he was for waiting for a more opportune time mm -hmm. so there's times where he perceives as more opportune how is he gonna live in heaven with Jesus know who Jesus is see Jesus in all of his glory and then dare, <laughs> dare to come to Jesus and try to tempt him. This just shows the length the devil is willing to try to cause us to choose his way and try to come into agreement. And he's looking for, a, you know, a more opportune time. Um, so it is really important that we just stay girded up with our, oh, with our support system mm -hmm. and with, with the Holy Spirit and staying up in our word. So those are my thoughts for right now. Okay, so um, here's something that just dropped in my spirit in uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 1, when he's giving the instruction, right? So as Balaam was going to walk and go out with um, the king of Moab, here's one thing um, that's being highlighted. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridicules. So first, you know, there's the walk and then there's the stand. And then when you get comfortable, you begin to sit down. Right. And we know that light and darkness don't have any fellowship. So here's some of the ways that we get caught up when it comes to the compromise, like you hold strong to your convictions, you know what they are, you have the Holy Spirit, but why is it that we just fall short? And then also highlight highlighting God's grace in the fall. 
you know, we can go back to the book of Genesis when Eve ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. And then notice how in Genesis, her name was woman, right? It was woman. She didn't receive her name until after the fall when God told her her name. Or was it Adam that gave her the name? Either or, she received her name after the fall. He said Eve, because you will be the mother of all living uh, creatures or living uh, everything that's living. And so what is it about God's grace that comes in when we need it, when we've done bad, when we fail? Well, I mean... <laughs> God, well, God's grace is wonderful. That's what it is. <laughs> right, His right. grace, and but, but I wanted, I wanted to go back to what you were saying at the beginning about you were saying that um, we, we there's these different stages that we go through before you fall completely, and there's different there's different things that lead us there. I think that when we're talking about compromise in general, you said it yourself. You said you have to stand on, you have strong convictions. But the problem is, is that most people don't know what they believe. They don't know what their convictions are and their convictions have already been compromised. So oftentimes like what we, 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 we make so many exceptions for certain things. Oh, well, it's okay to do this because they're doing it. Or I've seen other people do it and, and, or, or, you know, oh, well, it's just the, the Pentecostals who don't do that. Or it's just the, the Baptists who don't do that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like we make all these different excuses instead of just saying, well, what does the word of God say? Right. You know, what does right. what does the Lord say? How are we to live our lives? Like she said, um, you know, uh, that he is perfect and that we are to be perfect. So he also says, be holy for I am holy. And if we were really trying to be holy, that would knock out a lot of the things that we do and a lot of the temptations because holiness is, is on a whole nother level. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but I think that, that God's grace, yes, we have grace, but it's not American express card. It's not something to be used, you know, like, Oh, well, God's going to forgive me. I can just do this this one time or I can, you know, make an exception just this once and then I have God's grace. Yes, we get new mercy every day. Yes, he his grace is sufficient for us, but there is a standard of living that he calls us to. Right. And he even says that even the very elite will, will be will, fooled. Yeah. Yeah, so if if it so if you if you're not even the part of the elite, then how can you assume that you know everything? You know, you know right. what's right from right. Lean not to your own understanding. Like we don't always know what's right and what's not, and that's why we have to go to the Word of God. I mean, he started off right in the scripture and numbers. He went before God and asked, you know, what should I do in this situation? But you know, that's how we should all do, so that we can make sure that we're we're not compromising our life. And then the last thing I just want to say about that is there are people in the Bible who did not compromise. It was not just about Jesus. I mean, Daniel didn't compromise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his friends, you know, they didn't compromise, mm -hmm. and uh, Joseph didn't, didn't compromise. compromise, right? You know, and then Nehemiah, when he saw that something was wrong, he pleaded on behalf of his people, and he did not compromise. Right. He stood for his cause. Like you have to make that decision that what what I believe and even Esther she didn't even compromise on behalf of her people she said well you know what we're gonna fast I'm gonna go before my husband I'm afraid but we're gonna fast so we right. can get yeah. this done like there there just has to come a place where you say this is what I believe in and what's right is right and so I'm gonna stand for that and it doesn't matter what other people think mm -hmm. or how other people might feel or how they might look at us but if this is what thus say at the Lord because we're really saying thus say at the Lord if this is what thus say at the Lord then I'm going to align with myself with that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on, on many points. Um, I realize that as, as Christians, many of us um, compromise for fear of being accepted mm -hmm. or fear of people. Um, I guess we live in a cancel society right now. Fear of being canceled, fear of somebody saying that, you know, they were being mean or, um, pointing the fingers instead of standing on what it is that we believe, standing on our faith. And what you said, Cam, we really need to um, be in a place that we are in our word and being in the word on a continual basis because we're all tempted, like mm -hmm. I said earlier. We all are in a, a situation where based on what it is that are going that's going on in our lives, it causes us to go down a path that we may not even intend to go on. Mm -hmm. It depends on what it is that you have going on. Like, I can just speak for myself. At one point in my life, I felt like my middle name was compromised. I felt like 
everything that I did, if it was choosing a mate, choosing a spouse, or um, going after a p particular career, especially like now in my life, sometimes we have to get to a place where our conviction and what it is that we believe as it relates to God weighs more than what it is that we need in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I, I truly feel like we, we just really need to be rooted and grounded in the word. word. And we really need to be, like I said, have a support system because in that in that place and having someone to help to reel you back into where you should be or just speak the truth. Because sometimes we are so afraid to speak to each other and say, well, Ashley, you were out of line when you did blah, 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 mm -hmm. because we feel like that particular individual is going to walk away from us. But if you're 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 that quick to walk away from me, then you really didn't need to be there in the first place. So. I truly feel like yes, we can back to your your question. We can we can walk the straight and narrow and we can God has equipped us with what we need to be totally rooted and grounded, but we have to be willing to cleave to that regardless as to what happens around us. Absolutely, Camille. Um so I I'm in total agreement with everything that's been said so far and I just want to you know reiterate about the importance of like you're saying staying in the word and staying in relationship with the holy spirit because i think what happens also with our um with our compromises we get wrapped up in trying to do everything ourselves we're, we're compromising on waiting and choosing our way and we're choosing the now instead um rather than having that strong foundation where or we base our convictions on feelings and what's familiar mm -hmm. and so we're compromising based on the flesh and i and I don't want to keep on like stressing about the fasting, but I feel like that's why it's really important to fast right. so that we can continue to die to our flesh, die to ourselves mm -hmm. so that we're in the habit of I'm not relying on the food to satisfy me. I'm not relying on my feelings to guide me. I'm relying completely and solely on you, God, to tell me what I need to do and where I need to go and stop just being so reactionary and whatever is convenient, whatever is comfortable, whatever is quick, whatever is self gratifying whatever is going to gratify the people around me um right. you know whatever's going to make me the hero for the people mm -hmm. around me uh, and i think i think those are a lot of the things that cause us to compromise so yeah so that's what i was gonna say okay so the next thing i want to bring up and km you touched on it about being holy as god is holy not holier than thou within myself depending on me because we know that that comes off as self-righteous mm -hmm. and being pious right having this religious attitude about myself that i'm the end all be all and i'm perfect which is not true so can you touch on what does that entail what does that mean being holy as he is holy because we know that god just doesn't get sin he's not a part of it I mean, so holiness, and I think that's where people start to put those terms on you, and you start to think, well, am I being overly righteous? Am I being, you know, too pious? But because they don't, they don't like holiness, right? They don't want to see someone who's actually trying to live right, because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. Holiness is really a, doing what the Word of God tells us to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, being holy means that you are setting yourself apart. You are not con you are not conforming to this world, but you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're not thinking the way that the world does. You're not participating in worldly activities. I know, you know, when people say things like that and, or say worldly, people are like, "What's worldly?" Well, the things of the world, you know, it's the, if, if it's not of God, you know, it's the things of the world. And I'm not talking about having a form of godliness because a form of godliness is where people know the right things to say, you know, and they know how to dress. They know how to act. Oh, how you know, praise the Lord, sister. And they know that fake tongue that they'll say. And I, I can't say it. I just can't bring myself to say it. But, you know, th like that's not holiness that's not that's having a form of godliness mm -hmm. um how you know being true well this is what we do that being religious like a pharisee religious that's religious. not holiness either holiness is carrying yourself and conducting yourself in a way as if the lord is with you we have to remember that this temple is a temple of the holy spirit and i don't think people understand because we keep talking about the holy spirit and i wanted I, I wanted to say something about that because you know yes we need to the whole, we need the Holy Spirit to do everything that we do. But if you don't have a relationship with God, I mean, I know you might 
have confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart. But if you don't have a relationship with God, tell me how do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is a gift from the Lord. Like the right. Lord left, he said, I, I leave behind the comforter. Mm -hmm. And so how do you have this comforter with you if you don't have a relationship? You're not even going to, how can you be led? You're, you're, you, how can you make decisions? How can you even trust that you're making the right decisions when you haven't even spent time with God and you haven't been in that place and that, you know, that indwelling and, right. and, and I don't know, it just, I just, I can't see, you can't have one without the other. We're supposed to bear fruit of the spirit, but that again, bearing fruit in is, 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 is birthing. It's a birthing that happens on the inside of you. You can't birth something from something you haven't been intimate with, you know? Oh, wow. So how can you That's have good. the Holy Spirit? How can you be, you have the fruit of the spirit if you have no intimacy with God? Right. Like, so compromise happens when we, when we steer away from God. Compromise happens when we're not spending that time with him like we need to, because then our decisions are wrong. Mm -hmm. Our perception is wrong. Like we're, we're leaning to our own understanding and the holiness is not there. You, you're, you're, you go in the club and you don't feel any kind of way because music, well, it's nice music and the bumping is good. You know, <laughs> like I don't feel anything. Or someone says, hey, just try this shot. Well, you know what? Shot ain't going to hurt. The Bible is saying that. I mean, I'm just being honest. You say a couple cuss words here and there, you know, the Lord will forgive me. Right. You know, it's like you start to compromise right. on all these little things but what it's doing is it is it's causing your vessel to be no longer pure mm. and it's taking away that purity and the holy spirit needs a pure place to be in wow mm -hmm. you can't contaminate that vessel mm -hmm. again the holy spirit is within us not just around us right within us and that's what i believe holiness mm -hmm. is i'm sorry mm -hmm. that was good mm -hmm. okay so then do you have to have a relationship with the Father, and then another relationship with the Holy Spirit, and then another relationship with Jesus? Or is it all combined as one relationship? It's fun. Yeah. One. Triune. It's a triune God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, th but we have to remember, so we have God the Father, God, God, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, he says that no man can come to the Father but through him right. so you you we call on jesus we call on him to do things you know to intervene to do things on behalf of us and he sits on he sits next to our lord and savior who are in heaven right he sits next to god mm -hmm. right on the throne and we'll be seated in heavenly places with him right but the holy spirit is what's here on earth and active and so i think that we sometimes we don't really we think we just out here just walling is that the way they say really <laughs> milling in it right we just out here doing walling out yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> just doing whatever and that there's no accountability there's nothing here that will physically stop us from doing something else or that can physically you know enter i don't i don't know how, if i'm saying it right but that can intervene or whatnot but i mean but the holy spirit is here and present on this earth jesus walked the earth mm -hmm. but god our father is in heaven has always been in heaven but yes they are the same so you you pray right. To, yes, know, absolutely. Home. I just want to throw that out there just for clarification, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. for the audience. I mean, we know what we know and we're all on different levels, but someone may be needing clarification to say, OK, help me to b understand that. Can you break that down? So I'm looking out for you all. I'm looking out for the audience <laughs> when I ask these questions because people want to know. OK, then. So can, can we can we agree that all compromise is not necessarily bad? compromise hmm. I mean because realistically I mean this is just my thought and you know people will say whatever and and disagree with me but I do believe that in the scripture that all of us knows um when you talk to a person that is a new Christian they're like John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life mm -hmm. to me that is some form of compromise, but because in order for us to have everlasting life, God gave His begotten Son. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is to, to a degree a level of compromise. Like we can't think that um, there's a compromise when somebody that you love and you care for may be going down a path that you know is bad for them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we should still show them love. We can direct them. But we, does that mean completely cut off from an individual that you know is that that is in sin? We should still be able to, you know, like the compromise is I'm not going to necessarily throw the Bible at you, but I'm going to love you mm -hmm. and I'm going to pull you to 
you know, yeah. understand what it is that I'm saying or understand where I'm coming from. But can we agree to, I mean, just, just be in a place that we love on each other and the love that I give you helps to bring you to Christ. Because sometimes we can be in a place so much that we are saying, this is what the Lord said, this is what the Word says, this is what you should and should not do, that you cause somebody to stray. You cause somebody to go even further because they feel like God doesn't have any kind of understanding as what it is that they are going through. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I feel like, yes, compromise, we can look at it in a negative way, but on the other side, there is there's certain levels of compromise, and not all compromise is a okay. bad thing. Mm -hmm. I have to respectfully okay. disagree. You agree? You're fine. So I think that um, when you first said John three sixteen, and, you, and I was thinking to myself, I said, you know, he compromised, so we don't have to, right? You know, and then but and, that is but a level of compromise. Even, but even when we, like when you were saying, like, because I think about my my family, right? right? And I, and so even when we think about family, how they may not be doing the right thing, so so to speak. But you still love them anyway. I don't think that that's a form of compromise by not beating them over the head with the Bible. I, you know, my testimony is that I have a child that was doing some things that weren't right. And she came to me one day at 11 o'clock at night and asked if I would pray the sinner's prayer with her. She said she wanted to get saved. It was out of the blue during a fast. And I wasn't even fasting for that right. <laughs> time, you know. And um, but I never I, every time she asked me a question directly, you know, what does the Bible say about mm -hmm. this? I told her the truth. Right. And I said, you know, I love you, but this is what the word of God says. And I'm, but it didn't change my relationship with her. And that was always the thing. I always made sure that we still had a loving relationship, right. but she understood where I stood. So I never compromised on what I believed. Well, and I, I guess that that came out the wrong way because I do, I'm in a situation too, where I have a child that is going through a, well, I have children, I have three children mm -hmm. and they all are not necessarily, um, doing everything that I desire for them to to do. But at the same time, I don't want to be so much in a place that I'm constantly saying what the Word says or what the Bible says and not listening to what it is that they are going through. And in talking to them and in the part where I said not beating them over the head with the Bible, they know what it is that I believe. Mm -hmm. They know what it is that I know to be true. And they know that I'm not going to waver on my belief. And I start every conversation off with the fact that you know what it is that I believe and that we can agree to disagree mm -hmm. and your generation doesn't agree with, you know, the statement of agree to disagree because no matter what you say, no matter how long we speak, no matter how, how many hours we sit here and talk about this, it is not going to change what I, I believe. But what I am going to stand on is the fact that I love you, mm -hmm. regardless as to what you do, regardless as to how you live, regardless as to how you sin, I am going to love you because realistically, I have my own set of issues. So I said that and thank you, but that was not necessary. But what you just said yeah. is you doing what the word of God yeah. says to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like when we love, like we're not, when, when the Lord tells us like to, to live our life and being holy and righteous and perfect and all these things. Sometimes it's it's better seen than right. heard or spoken. Mm -hmm. And so your life should be a living testimony. You don't have to say anything. People just say the way that you live, they know. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that they know not because they've been in your house, but because... <laughs> but because... No, but because they've yeah. seen you and they know how... Right. They're like, man, you know, this person is safe for real. <laughs> right. You know, and not, yeah. not that they're overly righteous, but I just know that they love God. I know that they're safe for real. And I know that if I, you know, anything pertaining to it, I can come to them and I feel right. safe in that space. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is still, not, that's not compromising. That's, that's still living according to what, yeah. because you can't change a person. At the end of the day, we are responsible for, for what we right. do. Yeah. We're right. not responsible for anybody else. We're only responsible for what we do and what, or what we don't do. Right. Absolutely. So now that you said that, and Audrey, you brought up a good point because we're responsible for what we do. Absolutely. But I'm looking for the scripture and maybe you all can find it for me. But when God says their blood will be on your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's when he told me that in my own prayer time, 
and my quiet time with the Lord right. because of this responsibility, this mantle that is heavy. I'm just being real. Okay? <laughs> That's another that I didn't. Go, I let, I cut off there because there are <laughs> stages to this, you know. Yeah. So when I say I'm responsible for me, but I also know I'm responsible for my children. I'm responsible for my husband. I'm responsible for those that are part of my ministry. I'm responsible for the souls that he brings into my life. So of course, yes. Now if you've been given a, 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 a if you've been called to a place. You have souls that he's placed. But again, they still have to make their own choices. So you you are responsible for doing what God told you to do. Right. right. So just like Jonah, he was responsible to go tell Nineveh to repent right. so I can bless them and, 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 and save them and not destroy them. Give them the opportunity. That's all Jonah had to do is give them the opportunity to do the right thing. And that's all we're supposed to do, even in, even those that are in ministry. There's a scripture, it's in, um, I think it's in First John-ish maybe, where it talks about if you've been called to teach the word of God, that you have to, that you're you're going to be held at a higher standard. Is that the one you're talking about? But, no, this one I think is in Ezekiel, but oh, it talks blood. about like, try to find it because I really, really want to read that because, yes, we are responsible for us right before the Lord. We're all going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account of what he given us to steward or what he's called us to. And how did we do it? Did we do a well job, uh, 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 well done, my good and faithful okay. servant, mm -hmm. or is it going to be some things that's there that we just going to have to work it out and just hope and trust and believe that God does have the understanding for our shortcomings and that we were able to repent of those shortcomings before him when it's all said and done. It's Ezekiel 3. Actually, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. 3.18. Oh, I was just going to say Ezekiel 3.18 also. <laughs> yeah. Can you read that? I, I think you forgot that. me. No, no. I didn't forget you. I know you're here. I didn't. Ezekiel 3, right? Yeah, 18. Yeah, Ezekiel 3.18. 3, 18. Okay, let me just read that for everybody up in here. Okay? But it says, yeah. So mm -hmm. it says... When I say to the wicked, you will certainly die and you do not warn him or speak out to tell him to turn from his wicked way to save his life. That same evil man will die in his sin, but you will be responsible for his blood. However, if you have warned the wicked and he does not turn from mm -hmm. his wickedness or from his wicked way, he will die in his sin, but you have freed yourself from responsibility. So... When the Lord gave that to me in my own quiet time of studying before him because of this platform that he called me to and told me to do back in 2009, I'm like, uh, yeah, run mm -hmm. that back because your blood ain't going to be on my right. hands. Listen, I got too much to worry about. I got Manny's blood on my hands. I got my family's blood on my hands. And somebody that's tuning tuning into the live talk show who either is a guest or who watching, listen, it ain't going to be on my hands. So when he be telling me to say what he's dropping right. in my spirit to say or to even ask for that person, not for me, I'm going to say it. And I'm gonna be like, uh, we good, right? You, you, we ain't <laughs> got no you're beef, right? And relieved of the responsibility, and right. I'm relieved of responsibility. So, but that's that, that's that's the that's the basic response. If you've already told someone about Christ, you've witnessed to them, you've already told them to turn from their ways, you've already right. told them what, what they're doing is not godly, and you've given them, you know, that's going a little bit extra by giving them the scriptures and whatever else they need. You've done your part. Okay, so then once you've done your part, right? Because I feel like we all don't want anyone to perish. Right. We don't want, even our loved ones that are not walking upright with the Lord or whatever, Especially. we don't want them to perish. So then again, as I said before, the approach, how do I approach this? And that's when I seek the Lord to say, okay, Lord, do you want me to, uh, okay, so Terrence has a question. What does that mean, blood on your hands? Camille, you want to answer that? <laughs> oh, y'all want me to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, but I, I think that just a, it's a level of responsibility. We'll be held responsible because we're still going to have a form of judgment at the end. It's not going to be like us going to hell type judgment, but there is going to be um, the different judgments where we're going to be given the crowns for our accomplishments and things that we've done. So I, I believe that that 
their blood on our hands is kind of like a, a level of responsibility that will be accountable because God put us in position and assignment to be there, to be the light for those around us. And we, in that regard, buried that in the sand. Um, Cause you know that God is looking for us to use our gifts and abilities and talents all to advance his kingdom. So if that even comes in the form of being of proximity, being in um, proximity to these people and we and we could have told them about God but we chose not to especially yeah. if he gave us the unction to do so and then we were disobedient then I I believe the blood in your hands is just us having a accountability and responsibility for for um not sharing what we were supposed to share now what's the actual penalty for that I I can't I speak on know. on that but that's what I believe that's the blood on blood in the hand verbiage means now in terms of compromise i think that the exchange just had different definitions of compromise i think that's just all it was um y'all were just looking at compromise from different perspectives if i'm looking at compromise i i'm thinking in this discussion that um the the definition was more about you know if you if we have a godly a godly standard we're supposed to be living by and then we're making the choice not to live um, by that standard and we're allowing our own agendas to override for whatever reason for our discomforts for whatever reason um, we're not living up to the standard that God's asked us to live so to me that was how I interpreted compromise mm -hmm. in terms of a great example of what y'all are describing when it comes to knowing how to approach, like Ashley was saying, the approach. I just, I believe that that good Samaritan, I mean, not good Samaritan, um, the lady, the lady who was caught in adultery. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That the reason why that is even in the Bible is so that we can one ref reflect on how we're, we yeah, have sinned as well. Mm -hmm. And two, how it could be addressed because Jesus didn't, throw the bible at her right. he didn't point fingers he didn't right. condemn her right. he wasn't abrasive but he didn't deny the word either mm -hmm. first he just engaged her in what was going on with right. her in a in an open way you know and then he defended her gave her grace mm -hmm. and then between he and she he, he was like all right don't sin anymore so he still addressed it but there was just an order of how he addressed it it mm. wasn't conviction 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 right, right. It, it was, was an order that relationship then <laughs> in love growing to love then here's the truth and I, i'm telling you the truth in love if you're just going to tell people the truth true 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 and then you don't have that relationship that's going to be that could be very repelling mm -hmm, but if people yeah. know that you're coming from a pl of a place of care and you demonstrated that then you put yourself in a position for them to be more receptive to what you have to say and then they understand the heart of where you're coming from when you say you know i just i don't want you to do this or not that i don't want you to I encourage you not to not to do this right. because this is going to lead to this, and I won't. I don't want this to happen to you because I love you, Camille. That was really really good. Um, the order of how God, how mm -hmm. Jesus dealt with us in our sin, in compromise, you know, whatever you want to call it, how He approached us. You know, He He did it in love. He took care of the issue, and then He spoke the truth and said why you should not do this because something else could happen far more worse than where you are now. I think that, that when the Holy spirit convicts us, it's the same way, mm -hmm. you know, like we're not, it's not brash or, you know, it's not really, you might not feel great about what you're right. feeling, but you, but it's still not, you know, in a bad way, like you, you might be doing something or getting ready to do something. The Holy spirit drops something in your spirit and just says, you know, well, should you really do that? You know, yeah. is that really the right way to go about this? Yeah. Should you have really said that? Yeah. You know, kind of, <laughs> you yeah, know, right. bringing you back I have an a example that just happened. So, <laughs> uh, my mom is, is staying with me and Manny. She's uh, been here for now, what, two weeks, going on three. So, she's going to be here for a month and a half with us. And um, there was a, a towel in my bathroom my decorative towel that I have hanging up in my bathroom and it wasn't there. And so I'm like, where's my towel? Where's my towel? Like, what's going on? Where's my towel? And I asked my mom, like, mom, where's my towel? And 
she's like, well, I don't have it. I didn't take it. And I'm like, oh, Manny, where's my towel? Like my decorated towel. I have my bathroom. And I had washed clothes and the towel was in the dryer. And so when I found it, because I was taking out the clothes out the dryer so I can wash. And then when I saw it and immediately mm -hmm. I got convicted immediately. And I heard honor your parents. Honor your mother and father. And I said, okay. And so I went to my mom and I said, mom, I said, I found my towel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to make light of it, even though my approach wasn't light. And so I said, I found my towel, mom. And she was like, uh-huh. Like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry. I apologize. I just thought. And she was like, but why would I take your towel? What would I need to do with your towel? And I was like, okay. You know, and I felt bad. You right. know, something that small could have been handled a little differently. I probably could have just shut my mouth and not said anything. Yeah. And then when I went to the dryer, got the towel, and it would have been done, right? There wouldn't have been no hurt feelings or no disappointment or whatever the feelings were at that time between my mom and I. And so I had to. And so when I was taking a shower, she had came in, you know, and she was in the bathroom. And I was like, you know, take my shower. She's like, yeah. She said, Ashley, I love you. I really do. Even if you do think I stole your towel. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, mom, I love you too. And I said, I was sorry, right? But something that's simple. And so God's grace in that, because he told me, he said, honor your mother and father. Right. And you need to go apologize. And I said, okay. And even though I tried to make light of it, right tongue and cheek, like, mom, look, I found in my towel. You know, still the damage was there and it was done. And right. it had to be undone. That's the part. The damage was done. It was there. So now go take your butt in there to your mother and say what you need to say to her face to face. Like you did beforehand. So, yeah. It's all about our approach. It's all about how we approach everything. Because... Some things are very hard to have a conversation about, but we have to be careful how we approach certain things, and we have to do everything in love, because if there's no love, I mean, I think in the Bible it says love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. Like, we have to make sure that we are approaching everything in, in love. I mean, we can't just be negative um, even though somebody is doing something that is not the right thing to do. We can't go about it in a negative way because then what separates us from the world? If we come to individuals and we're nasty and we're negative and we're mean and we're rude, what is it about us that is supposed to draw them to Christ? We, we got to do something that, is, that separates us from everyone else. So honestly, we need to love. And like you said, Camille, that, was, that, was, that actually opened up my my heart and my head to think about when God went to the woman. Wasn't that the same one that he went to and he said, he that was that is without sin, let him cast the first stone? Yes. Because yep. realistically, if she was caught into adultery, why is she the only person that's standing there? Where's the other person? Right. In order to commit adultery, it takes two people. Mm -hmm. So where is the other side right. of the adulterous act? Mm -hmm. And then it also talks about how Jesus bent, bent down and he started writing in the sand. So then we have to think about what is it that he was writing in the sand that caused everybody to start to flee? Because at that point, it's like, okay, well, if you, if you are without sin, then cast the first stone. But if you, you have sin, you walked away. Because if you are truly without anything and anything that is going to say that you are in a sinful nature, you will be quick to throw throw the stone at the person. So we really need to, to one, check ourselves sometimes mm -hmm. because although our stuff is not necessarily for the world to see, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. No man is perfect. The perfect person is actually with him, which is uh, Enoch, Right. He, he walked, walked. I know. I thought about that, too, when I was studying and, and, you know, coming before the Lord regarding today's topic, the compromise, because Enoch right, walked so uprightly with the Lord that he God took just took him. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man. And yeah. then, so the question that I posed was, is it possible to walk the straight and narrow path? And it is because mm -hmm. we've seen it time and time again. And, you know, each day when we wake up, when God wakes us up, 
with his spirit and gives us another day, another chance that we are grateful and thankful to be in our right minds to say, okay, Lord, today I choose you. Today I ask that you would help me to walk uprightly and to be your witness, whether I'm in, whether I'm saying it in word or in deed with my actions and with my words. Right. So uh, as we come to the end of our show, is there any last minute thoughts or anything the Lord places on your heart that you want to say? I'll say something. I can go last, though, but I do want to say something. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So just kind of along the same theme of this heart posture, basically, towards others and towards God. In order for us to love people at the capacity that God would want us to love, we have to have that relationship with God, like we've been saying throughout this whole time. This is not something that we can love imperfect people without the level, without having that relationship with God. And and when I think about this, how the Pharisees were so focused on rightness, you know, they went for rightness first. Jesus went for relationship first. I'm thinking about how he's not saying, don't compromise. Don't you dare compromise. And even when he was talking, he was saying, honor your mother and father. That scripture is saying, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. He wants us to understand that it's not about him pointing fingers. It's not about just rightness. And I'm not saying righteous, okay? I'm saying rightness, being correct and right and you know, um, above, you know, looking at ourselves as above everyone. He's, it's not that approach at all. He's like, seek me, spend time with me. I'm going to show you the things that are going to bring you life that it may go well with you and that the people around you, you can pour into so that they can feel my love too. So we're, we're cultivating this relationship where we're wanting to please him with our words, wanting to please him with our actions. This is what's growing in our heart because we've grown our relationship with him. We spent time with him and our desires become his desires. We right. learn what his wants are and we're not doing it in the sense of, oh, checkbox, I was right today, checkbox, I was right today, but it was, no, I learned more about you today and I love you and I learned more about your love for me and I don't want to separate, I don't want anything to be in between us. That's much I value our relationship. That's why I don't want to compromise because I don't want to hurt you. I don't want anything that's going to separate me and you. So just wanting people to like really think about how even though people get off put by Christian faith because they feel like condemnation, 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 if they could only know that Jesus is just drawing people in because he wants you to be able to see his love, feel his love, know his love. And and the sin is not the highlight. Do we need to avoid sin? Yes, but the sin is not the highlight. The love is the highlight. Then the sin is, starts to I won't say phase itself out, but kind of. That's what I envision. Like the more you grow close to God and Jesus and you understand him and his love, the less you want to do the things that separate you from him. Right. And that's by choice. Mm-hmm. True. So. I can piggyback on that. And then I guess Kay, I'm going to bring us home. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think the the biggest thing that, that reigns in my head or rings in my ears is stay connected. Stay connected to God. <laughs> And to the word like that, that is the major way that we are going to get through anything in life is just to stay connected. Mm-hmm. I agree with, with, with everything that has been been said. And I, you know, I was thinking when um, Kamala was talking, of course, the scripture says there is that now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And and I and, and I know when, when when I say certain things, it may come across like, you know, beating the Bible over your head, but it's not. I, we, we have a place in God. There's a place in God where we can live righteously, mm-hmm. where we can live holy, where we can live according to where he has called us to live. And it's a wonderful place. Do I live there every day? No, it's not my constant address. I'm still working on it. Right. I'm just like Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 15. I pulled it up. Verse 31, he says, I assure you, believers, by the pride which I have in you, in your union with Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. I face death 
and die to self. Like every day we have to die to ourself, die to our flesh every morning. That's when we get our new mercies each mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I picture, I'm, you know, I'm a visual person. I picture it's like standing like, okay, I got my mercy for today. Right. I'm dying to self, putting self on the, on, on the bench. And now I'm about to go out here and try to live holy. Right. And maybe you do great. And maybe you don't. Right. Maybe you make some mistakes along the way. And maybe you don't, yeah. you know, and, and so it's, it is a daily walk. You know, mm-hmm. it's not a it's not a sprint. It's not it's right. not a, a monthly journey or a quarterly right. report, but it's a daily walk. It's something right. we do every single day. And and when it comes to compromise, you know, we there are so many little compromises that, that appear in our lives. Little stuff, things you probably wouldn't even think of. Oh, you know, um, like for instance, I mean, I'll be transparent. I am so I have been so upset with myself because I compromised by telling someone something that it wasn't all the way true, but it wasn't all the way wrong. And I was like, man, Lord, I can't believe I did that. And I repented. I felt so bad, you know, and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was conviction there, but there was condemnation when I started feeling really, really bad. But, you know, you know, that's the enemy when you start really like, and I'm beating myself up. How could you do that? And this is why this, you know, no, 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 no. That's, that's not God. God is not going to bring it, you know, make you you know, feel all sad and depressed over right. something. You know, that's the, that's when the enemy tries to seep in. That's where he waited for an opportune, you know, moment, yeah, right? The opportune moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, you made a little compromise here. Now I can creep in, and now mm-hmm. I'm going to make you feel condemnation. That's how those things start to happen, and we all face it, like for different things. Yes. Mine wasn't to gain anything per se, but it was to it. Uh, I I can't remember what it was about, but I just remember how I was feeling afterwards. But it wasn't anything like huge, but it still was a compromise. And we do it, you know, for the sometimes the dumbest reasons, (laughs) you know, like, but, but it, it, it leaves an opening. And really, I think that that's what we have to pay attention to. It's not about trying to be perfect. It's not about, oh, well, I don't want to go to hell, but it's about, you know, just really trying to live as God would have us to and, and not making those small those small, uh, uh, what it was, like, like, well, those small excuses or small, you mm-hmm. know, opportunities for the enemy to set in and have his way. Because we got to also remember that the enemy deals with imitations, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, if you think about, uh, I, I was thinking about this today, but like the wheat and the tear grow together. And and we and I think about when you go to the grocery store, you know, the imitation is always right next to the, <laughs> to the real right. one. <laughs> and then you want to get the imitation because it looked the same and it's, you know, the price is a lot better. Yeah. But, you know, are you going to compromise your health for that? I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but right. so where there's always, there's always this opportunity to make a decision. And really that's what, this is all about. We're making decisions. We're making choices every single day yeah. in everything that we do. Everything that we do. And some of those just popped up. Ashley, I, I was having a bad day, I guess. I Because I just remember, I yelled at this man <laughs> driving down the street. But you know, but that was a compromise. I didn't have to yell at the man. I could. I was in my car. He couldn't hear me. Mm-hmm. You know, so... But just little yeah. stuff like that, but it gets you out of character. It gets you out of the And I was listening to church um, preaching at the time. I, had to t- I turned the preaching off so I could yell at that man because I do. But we do, yeah. though, we do make those little, and, and, and that was a compromise, mm-hmm. you know. And so my, I guess my last word would just be, you know, um, we're not trying to say, oh, you're, you've got to live perfect. I mean, of course, that's what we strive for every single day. Yes, there are things that we don't do right. But the goal, the goal is heaven, right? And the goal is to, to, to live according to the word of God, whatever that looks like. So each day, even trying something new, what does that look like in my life? What do I need to change in my life today right. with me, you know, that will draw me closer to God, that will draw me to that place where he would have me to be and make me a better Christian. Right. And, and, and it's not going to happen overnight necessarily, but God, I think he, he honors that because he knows you're trying. He knows that you're really trying. It's when we say, I don't care and I have grace and, you know, and so it doesn't matter or I can repent mm-hmm. or, you know, I know I'm going to get into heaven. So it doesn't matter. Right. When we say those things, that's when it does matter. But when we actually look at God and we say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to do my best today. And whatever your best is, I believe he honors that. Absolutely. Uh, this was a great conversation to be had. And what I want to drive home <clears throat> as we conclude this show is that it's not us the panel pointing fingers at you, the audience, or anyone, and saying, you know, it's not that. 
it's just a group of ladies that are here speaking openly and transparently about their walk and their relationship with their Heavenly Father, just like you have your walk and your relationship with your Heavenly Father, right? We all fall short of the glory, but when we do fall short, what is the Lord saying to us with the healthy conviction of the Holy Spirit of correction because God is a God of correction, just like he's a loving father that loves on us and that dotes on us, but he is also a God of correction. And so we will all have to stand before him and give an account of our life. And so this is just some things to ponder on. These are some things to take before the Lord in your prayer closet with him and really seek him and help you to understand, you know, what all of this entails, what all of this means. And so I hope that this helped you. Um, I know that it certainly helped me. And, you know, I could say the same probably for these ladies too, to have this, this Bible, this word of God, and let it be a reflection and a mirror to pour into us to be better, to be holy as he's holy, right? Of what he's called us, the standard that he's raised for all of us to partake in. And so uh, thank you so much for joining us this Saturday afternoon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And I just hope that, you know, you will continue to seek after him for your own, you know, well-being as well, too. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for using us as your vessels, Father God. We thank Thank you for blessing your people with ears to hear today, Father God, and eyes to see, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will continue, Lord, to use this platform, Father God, for your glory to spread love, to spread the truth, Father God, of your word, of the gospel, Father God, and that, Lord, as you are lifted up, you shall draw all men, Father God, that I am simply here to just point the way, to point them to you, Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray that you will cover the studio, Father God, cover Terrence, and cover these ladies, Father God, in their coming and going, and anybody who comes across the Life Talk Show as well. God bless them, Father God, and be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.